Tyler, thanks. When the United States was attacked at Pearl Harbor in 1941, Joe Gompers was only months into his first year of college. He says once the country was at war, the government took over the school. Academics were run by the college president and everything else was run by the Navy. So Gompers joined like many others. Three years, eight months, 20 days, and 10 hours <laughs> in the service. Joe Gompers could tell you exactly how long he spent in the United States Navy and everywhere he went during that time. It was quite a journey that started at Mount St. Mary's. All the guys, and of course, wanted to join. Everybody was one to get in the service at that time because we were attacked. And, and, uh, and uh, I joined the Navy. At the time, Gomper said the academics were run by the college president, but everything else was governed by the Navy. It was actually a boot camp for prospective officers. And we were, we were given boot camp, you know, regular Navy outfits. Everything was Navy, everything we did, except for the fact we could take commercial or could take academic courses through the college. And we were on the accelerated program. Gompers would eventually graduate and finish midshipman school and communications school before getting his ship assignment on the USS Bannock. We were a salvage and a firefighting ship and did towing, mostly towing. We would tow uh, ammunition barges, we would tow uh, food barges. By the time Gompers got to the ship, it had been through D-Day and had a new crew because of a mutiny. Its job now was to tow dry docks after invasions. We'd get a call to drop one off right after the invasion. And, and just as soon as the port was secure, we would bring in the dry dock to try to salvage any shipping that was damaged in there. Aboard the ship, Gomper sailed many places, including stops in the Pacific and through the Panama Canal. Towards the end of the war, he was sent to Okinawa as the U.S. prepared to invade Japan. I looked out over there, and I'm telling you, I never saw such an armada of shipping as I saw then. All the small shipping filled, actually filled that thing. They had every battle wagon in the fleet lined up as far as you could see. After the invasion, Gompers did get to go ashore. It was so sad. I remember going ashore and there wasn't one thing alive on the whole island, not even a leaf. It was just jagged bushes and, and stuff. And, and the stench, the stench of human remains, the parts that were blown up and weren't recovered. It was awful. I never, I never experienced anything like that. Once World War II was over, Gompers was part of the ship's crew assigned to destroy U.S. equipment left behind overseas. After more stops across the Pacific, they returned to the United States. The captain Gompers sailed under was discharged from the Navy, so he was offered the job. And I said, no way, Captain. I said, I don't want it. And uh, I, I knew that if that ship got, first I didn't want the responsibility. And second, I knew if it got to the States, they were going to um, uh, mothball it. And that would be another six or seven months in the service. Instead, Gompers finished out his time as the executive officer. Every time someone says, oh, you're a hero, I cringe because I think all you have to do is get old to be a hero. And, and to me, uh, I never wore boots uh, on the ground. I never carried a rifle and never killed a man. And, uh, and never around a, a blast that may have come down on a ship. The biggest challenge we have with these veterans' voices stories is how to condense someone's life into only a few minutes. Mr. Gompers and I talked for several hours, and his story could have been an entire show within itself. Not only is he a veteran, he was also in the West Virginia House of Delegates and a prosecuting attorney, among other things. If you want to read more from Mr. Gompers about his life and growing up in Wheeling, you can head over to WTRF.com.